All right. Uh, request flow. So what is request flow? Okay, how person on internet hits web server, request gets to Magento, Magento does things, Magento sends response to person. It's request flow. It, it gets a little more involved than that, though. Um, so uh, yeah, bro broken out into these eight different sections. Uh, we'll we'll only get through a couple of these before. I'll probably just I might even just take a break <coughs> after uh, app initialization. But um, yeah, so by the end, we basically we we take you from the beginning of the request, kind of the header request makes sense, and step you through a couple of the different uh, processes that go on inside the the uh, parsing of that request and then get into uh, get into where we actually start to connect that with uh, with the output elements with the view layer okay so app initialization so this this is probably one of those missing pieces from yesterday um, and unfortunately uh, this is not an authoritative delving into this into the app stack that would take a week on its own um, but we want to um, we want to just give you give you an overview of that process and just show you the different areas where things are happening. Okay, um, so you're going to see some flowcharts on here and some some sort of kind of Gantt style diagrams that 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 show all the different players and things that are going on. And I will go ahead and preface this with it: it's just that it's not essential. You could you could you could deliver someone's website to them and do it well without necessarily knowing all these components, but you're here for fundamentals of development and this is, uh, this is one of the fundamental pieces. This is request getting to Magento, Magento sending output. So, exhibit A. We start here, index.php. You recall yesterday we opened up this file and we looked and in there was mage run. And we can pass in a store code and specify a certain store to run. So that's the mage class, so store run. Store or mage run calls app run. And that's mage core model app. That's the, the Magento application. That's basically the heart. Uh, so we have to set up um, we have to set up our essential basic configuration. Um, and, and that there are a couple of methods that, that gather this information from configuration files, including local.xml. Uh, now, once we have this basic information, then we can really build out the config object and uh, initialize our modules. And then we have a couple of interesting things that happen here. So um, apply all updates. So that's, that's, a, that's a very cool one. That's actually those SQL migration files that you've seen in some modules. This is the first step where those, uh, some of those files are, are evaluated. So that's very, very early on in, uh, in application and initialization. And of course the interesting thing is if, the, if there is no configuration cached and there's been some version change and corresponding files uh, that, that satisfy the migration parameters, um, yeah, this will apply. This will apply them very early on in the request. There's also a related function called apply all data updates uh, because there are there are kind of three. Well, there's four, but I'll talk about two uh, of these migration files. You have the install scripts, you have upgrade scripts, and then you have data upgrade scripts. And the the only the only real thing with the data upgrade scripts is that they uh, at this point. It's further on down in the initialization, and we here we initialize the store object. So this can actually give us, if we have to do any kind of uh, scoped, save any kind of scoped data via our our uh, install scripts or our, our upgrade scripts, we would actually do it using a data upgrade. So this is just sort of showing you the the order that these methods are fired. All right, but the big things to to, to be aware of: our configuration is set up. Initialize uh, request object, which is important because that's that's how we uh, that's how we interact with the request, and then uh, dispatch to our routers. So that's this is the process where we um, get Magento started, and then 
after getting all of our configuration, become aware of all the routers and routes in our system. And that way we can start to match that request via configuration to some, uh, some module in our system. Okay? That's really all this slide is about. So, oh, by the way, I should mention that uh, the routing here is in the domain of the front controller. So we'll be talking about the front controller extensively in the next lesson. So most of us here seem to be pretty well versed in the, in the, inter, the internet and the World Wide Web. So this, uh, these, these slides are just, of course, a, a quick overview. We're aware of this thing called the internet. Um, the internet is not yet in the cloud, but I'm sure it will be. Um, uh, you'll have your hosting server and registrar and DNS server. Uh, these are all the things that kind of get a person to the website. Uh, so at the web server, the request hits the web server. The request is routed to index.php. Mage run is called. Mage run initializes the app via mage app run. For an analogous comparison, uh, you know, you have these configuration files for PHP. Um, and in a similar way that these are part of the setup of the PHP environment, uh, Mage Run triggers the setup of the environment for Magento. Okay, we've actually done pretty much all of these. <laughs> we've, we've already opened up index.php. We've looked at the autoloader. You remember from yesterday, uh, variant autoload class. If you just want to look at how that works, it's, it's all right in there. Uh, we enabled developer mode. Uh, what we haven't done so far is looked at store parameters. So one of the things that we saw in that we saw in the index.php file was this chance for evaluating store scope or website scope. So, so we have run codes and run types. So here we're going to either run store or website. <coughs> Default is store. Um, what does this mean? Well, this means in a similar way that we set an environment variable for, uh, uh, to, to enable developer mode, we could do a similar thing here. And again, AC access, not the most ideal place to do it. You would prefer to do it up in your, uh, in your host config. But for example, if I wanted to specify a certain store, say I wanted to specify my German store as the one that I want to load. Well, I could, let's see, I could go into my HT access file, and issue another set env call, so set environment variable, and what's my Let's see, run code. Oh, okay, so mage run code. And I could say German. Where did the German come from? Yeah, that's in my, it's in my, if I need to know what my, what, what code to use? Yeah, I would look in manage stores. And for my store view name, Yeah, there's my code. So you're really specifying code for store view, right? Store view is the store. That's <laughs> why <laughs> <laughs> so we had to put in that entire slide and that and that note that we actually just recently added in, just to to, to demonstrate that that's just the uh, an unfortunate naming convention here. So store and main store. So what is what is called what is labeled store view here? That's the store. And what is store name here is actually, that's a store group. Configuration, though, is, is either in the scope of a, store, of a store or of a website. Oh. Store group is where you could connect a root catalog or a root category and set up the default store view. Um, so this is where the store group kind of ties together the website and a particular you know, store view as a default. Basically, 
Uh, when I think of when I think of store groups, I just think, you know, this is my this is my category. It's my root category. <coughs> All right. So now if I am here, now let me see if I go here, I believe. Yeah. So German. Whereas before I was just loading the default code because I wasn't speci specifying anything and the default was English. All right? Yay. Any questions? Okay. Let's take a little break.